Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brunch with Bigfoot, Michigan. Rob, I'm your host, BMR, and as always, I'm joined by the Bearded One Tex. We got a great show today. MK Davis will be joining us shortly. MK Davis. If this is your first time here, please subscribe, give a thumbs up, hit the alert bell, and share with friends. You can find us on YouTube at Texas Front Porch. That's T E X apostrophe S Front Porch. And of course, Bigfoot Michigan Rob, both on YouTube streaming. You can also find us at Odyssey Radio, iHeart Radio, and KPNL Radio. Thank you to the lovely Anne Celine for that. You can find us on you can also find us on Facebook at Texas Front Porch. You can find us and reach us by email at Paracryptid Encounters and at gmail.com or by text at 972-559-0988. Don't forget to subscribe once again to Texas Front Porch, Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Enjoy our content. If you'd like to support us, the super chat, the super chat, everybody. It's always open and available. Or you can Venmo us. At symbol sign at text 6717. Hope you enjoy the show. And I'm going to bring up Tex here shortly. Hello, Tex. Eddie. How's it going today, brother? Man, it's going pretty good. I'm excited about this one. We've been talking to MK a little bit on the off air and everything. And this is going to be a good show. It, it's, it's, be- it's going to surprise some people. And uh, it's, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. I have been for a while. Um, it's unfortunately Kristen couldn't join us. She was chomping at the bit to be on this one because she she was really wanting to talk to MK. She's a big fan, and but you know those ER and ER nurse in way, she's better work. Yep. Yeah, ER nurse studying to be a doctor. Hey, all respect to Kristen for that one. And text before we bring up MK. How's the studio coming? I know, you know, we're in the midst of, of you're building that studio and where, what's the progress? I need an update. Well, man, I got to tell you, I ain't done much on it because it's been some dead gum hot. Yeah. And uh, it's, you know, as of right now, I don't have any air conditioning in there or nothing like that. So it's just been brutal. The yeah. plan is to get back. It, it kind of cooled off around here. We've got some rain coming in and everything. Um, my plan is is to actually do some work on it as soon as we get off air here today. So that yeah, sounds great, you know. And I once again go out and do yard work, you know. But I love doing it, and there's some things. My my garden is finally starting to fade out, so I got to fade out some of my plants. And uh, in Michigan, though, I've got jalapenos and green peppers that have yet, I've yet to grow any good ones. But that's my Our problem. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Our garden burned up. <laughs> yeah, well, it would in Texas. I suspect that, you know, we get 90s here in Michigan. But enough of what I got going on, what Texas got going on. If you want to kind of fade out the music, I'll bring up uh, MK Davis. And uh, MK, welcome to the show. You've been on the show, I think, last year you were on. And uh, it was such a, we got such a great response that we decided, you know what, let's have this guy back because you are certainly a professional in what you do. And before we get into this, I just realized, MK, that you are one hell of, of a photographer. I you, 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 you capture such great shots of the moon, and I just wanted to throw that out there because I love it. I've saved a lot of them, and I use them on my computer, and I just kind of look at them. Very, very cool photos you take. Well, I appreciate that. I, you know, I, I spent a lot of time practicing. Uh, you know, practice makes perfect. I've, I've got a, a huge, huge cache of failures so (laughs) you take a lot of pictures and then you get a few good ones and uh, i always appreciate the good ones just like you do Uh, now i do too mk and for a lot of people everybody knows mk dave especially if you watch this channel but if you'd like why don't you just walk us through a little bit of uh, your history and uh and we'll get the show rolling well as far as my bigfoot history i kind of backed into that uh, I was uh, into astro- astronomy, astrophotography in particular. Uh, I had gotten a telescope and outfitted myself for uh, photography uh, where it would track. You know, the, the sky moves across just like the sun does during the day. And you have to, you have to stay on target. So, you know, it requires a uh, motorized uh, 
equatorial mount. And I was able to do all that. And, and I, through trial and error, uh, I got better and better at it until I was producing some pretty good stuff. Uh, and I got kind of skilled at, at the, the development of film and the choices of films and the, what their sensitivities are. And, and uh, I saw a couple of pictures that came from the Patterson film that were leaked. And, and I say leaked. Nothing like them had been out ever. And I looked at them and, and I, you know, I knew from my experience that you can't get a good image from a bad film. And this was nothing like what they showed on TV, you know, which was you know, shaky and dark and grainy and, and you can't follow it. And this, these were fabulous images. Uh, so it, I, I became interested and I began an inquiry and I, I asked, uh, you know, the net was becoming a thing and you could contact people, you know, and, uh, I began an inquiry about where the rest of the, these images were, uh, where, where is the master copy? Because if you had the entire film looking like those images, it likely would tell its own story and wouldn't need me or anyone else to do any interpretation. So I said, well, this is the road uh, avenue to uh, getting uh, some resolution uh, about this subject. Uh, and so I began an inquiry and, and the inquiry uh, lasted for years and I've slowly acquired some of the best frames of the film. Uh, I, I got them from, uh, Canada. I got them from Miss Patterson. I got them from California. Uh, different people had them, and it it began to to form a copy of the film that was unprecedented in its clarity. Uh, go ahead. And when you go through these films, it's not actually. I could be wrong. Is it? It's not actually frame by frame. I mean, you've got it down to almost. To the second, do you, or is that an incorrect statement? Right, right. I do. I, I have it where you know, and it's it's, and some came from over here, some came from over there, and so I put them all together, and 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 I try to identify, you know, the problems that are, that the film has, uh, and and all film has problems. Uh, if if it were taken with a lens, you know, your lens is going to break up uh, the images into its component colors. And when you get your final image, you'll have some that aren't due to lensing, not being perfect. You'll find some that are not quite focused while other colors are sharp. And you put them all together, you get an average. But if you want to go for sharpness, if it's important to you, you filter out the unsharp ones. And, and then you and then you make your image out of only the ones that are properly focused, and then you end up with a black and white photo. And that's what I did first, and I produced this black and white photo. Uh, I mean, and then I produced all of them, and then I brought them all together and hand stabilized them, where where they were all in the center and uh, no movement took place ex except along the edges. And then when I released that one to the public, I mean, it was, it, it, went, it was a sensation because that was the first time that you could see what was going on in that film <laughs> and you didn't need ex an explanation. Uh, and so, and so uh, I, I continued on, uh, I, 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 develop techniques to do it in color uh and i just continued to improve the film every time that i could come up with a way that would uh, produce a sharper image uh so it, it, the film is my opus i've done other things i've worked on other films uh, mm -hmm. i've worked on iconic films uh, i worked on the uh, orville nicks assassination film uh, from Dallas, uh, JFK, uh, in behest of the Orville Nix family who provided it. And, 
I, I worked on the, the, the Zapruder film, which is, uh, it became available. Uh, and uh, all of those films had a lot more to give once they'd been properly treated and stabilized. Uh, so uh, it's, you, see, you see a lot of my stuff out there that some of it is I did for people and they just put it up, you know, under their name. But it's, uh, you know, I, 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 I like to think that I contributed toward truth and facts. And uh, it, the, the film, that film languished the grainy versions of it, you could say or do or say anything you wanted to about it. You know, no one could prove you're right or wrong. Uh, and, and people took advantage and, you know, they, big, Bigfoot was this, Bigfoot was that. Uh, people see things and they see other Bigfoot in it, floating, floating orbs. Uh, one guy said he saw a Bigfoot head just floating, you know? Uh, well, you can't say that with the good copies and the, the good versions of the film. You know, all, all of that's kind of disappeared. Uh, and, and people just watch the magnificence of that film and what's on it and watch that biomechanics and watch those muscles working. And it, it's, it, people see that every day in life and they recognize it and you, they don't need uh, to be convinced you know, uh, once, once they see it. And so that, that, that's where the film is at. Right. I've never now. understood. I've never understood the whole. It's a costume thing because the technology for that good of a costume didn't even exist then. It never you know, holds thing, water. That, that never holds water. Yeah. The best thing out there was, uh, you know, Planet of the Apes at that time, and and they, the was it the creator of the costumes and the makeup for that film came out and said, "I couldn't do anything that good. I wish I could." You know. Yeah, yeah. John Chambers, uh, a yeah. good friend of mine, Bobby Short, interviewed him in a nursing home. He said, "Well, I didn't do it." But when people said I did, I did not object. He said because <laughs> it was good for business. Yeah. You know, to really quickly before we get into the crux of uh, the Bigfoot and all that, it's a lot of people. I just found out this today, just what you just said. So I love this having you on, MK, as you've done other films and enhanced them outside of Patty, which everybody knows you for that, but Zap Rooter and so on. So as you're dabbling in this and making these films better quality, was that just to help tell a better story? Do you think, or what was your motivation just because you just wanted to get it out there with, with a better quality look on Lent and such? Uh, the, the Abraham Zapruder film, it, it shows um, the crime of the murder of JFK. Yeah. And it's really good because he was really close, but, it still stood for to be improved uh, because it was a handheld hammer. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know you're going to get some some of this when you when you when you lock it down. You can see uh, you, you're looking for the the, the nuances that, that tell you the direction of the bullet, and it, it it's it you know how many thousands of head wounds occurred during the war yeah. and and all of a sudden nobody knows anything about them yeah. <laughs> you know it, it, there's total mystery yeah, you right. know but uh, it, it's it's not a mystery uh, but but we can get into that at another time but sure uh, the the Orville Nix film even though it's not as close or the quality of the Zabruder film, it shows the criminal because it's on the other side of the street coming back, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, even though it's not as good a quality, that's it's the, the scouring of that film is worth it because it's coming back toward where the shot was fired from. And, 
and and so you were trying to look for it. I found things on the Orville Nix film. I found bullets striking the pavement behind the limousines. Pew, pew, and people reacting to it, too. I mean, they were backpedaling. Uh, you know, it, it uh, <laughs> there was a lot of bullets flying that day. Uh, and one of them, one of them hit close to a guy down there at the trestle. Piece of it nicked him in the cheek. He didn't know where it came from. He was bleeding. <laughs> you know, a lot of this work that you've done, can we find that somewhere? Because I'm totally into this. I got to go look, look this up. I have, I have probably. some of it on my uh, my Davis report, but you have okay. to look way back. All way right. Back through there. Uh, I just began to post stuff up there for the sake of the public. You know, if they, people could go and see a better version of it. I always, I always, I always leave it up to people to yeah. make their own decisions about those things. But it, it helps to see a better version. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and so, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, the Knicks family would allow me to do that. And, uh, of course, the uh, Zapruder frames are all publicly available now. So, so any, when, when, you, when you started going over those films, and doing work on them, did you, were you approached by anybody that kind of said, you don't need to do this type thing, or did you catch any flack or anything like that? Oh, uh, no, not really. Not really. Uh, it, it, the, the JFK thing is, it's, it's a little bit like the Patterson film. It's become synonymous with unsolvability. Mm -hmm. You know, people had, you know, it, in their own minds, it represents futility, you know. And when you if someone starts to to begin to pull that thing together into something that's way more worthwhile, they have some people have a hard time with it because they've they've they in their own hearts and they and they they have their own version of the solution. Uh, that that's become dear to them. So, you know, if I were to say, you know, well, I found the second gunman, you would, people would stand up and object, even if you did, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, 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 it's got the bar is very high. The bar is very high. Uh, medically speaking, the impact to his head was so, so, uh, catastrophic that it's 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 uh, people began to seek out uh, explanations for why it was so catastrophic you know uh and uh, very very few people have considered that two people can shoot at exactly the same moment from two different directions and it sounds just like one shot, and and it's two bullets hitting the head, and the head goes to pieces because you got two waveforms of, right. of power going through that skull at one time, and they collide, and they the whole thing just blows up. And uh, I I I think you know they there's there's got to be people who have seen that you know, in mass and during wartime, you know, uh, they, they, no one has sought out an expert in that. They, they, they seem to just let it go, you know, just let it go. Um, I, I tried to tell a person, I said, would you like to see the Kennedy in a way, in a form that you've never seen it before? He said, no. No, I don't, I don't want to see it in that form. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think it bothered him because he, he had solved the problem, you know. Yeah, in his and own mind. Yeah. He wanted to keep it ambiguous where where his was on the just same level as other people's, you know. And, and, and a real good film will make it all go away. Uh 
and f film film is uh, considered to be uh, a good form of evidence. It, it's it's not the event; it's a it's a rendering of the event. But film is accepted these days, digital or less so. You know, it's it's harder to accept digital because it can be, it can a lot so much can be done to digital. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know. There's, I, I've run into a misconception. I've had people tell me that, uh, or talk about, not you know, that always, you know, promoting this show and everything, having you on for the second time, that, uh, oh well, he he's got he's got the the smoking gun, as it were, for as far as Patty goes. He's got he's got the the whole film. He's got you know. The, where they they hung the bodies up and all this kind of stuff, and but that's not the that's that's not the uh, that's not how it is. No, I don't have any film of that. Uh, right. I, I I have had people tell me that they saw it, uh, which you know it's you just add that to the body uh, total body of evidence. It really doesn't pass muster for what you would call hard evidence. Right. You know, see, seeing is believing. Right. And when it comes down to it, I've got multiple people. I've got recorded interviews with different people who said they've seen it. And uh, w one person said he knows exactly where they're buried. But he has since passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a, all I have is an interview where he says he knows where they're buried. He actually tells me where, but I went down there and I, I had no desire to dig them up. I, 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 I really didn't. Uh, I, I, my, my goal was to keep the film uh, from, from languishing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was too important of a film right. and, and, you know, the, the things that that uh that cause that is are the are like the storyline uh it can't possibly be true people rightfully question it and then they question the whole film because these people are telling a storyline you know uh so you have to kind of have an understanding of the events in order to understand why they told such a story about such a great film. To well, the let's, point, let, you know, let's kind of, let's kind of get into that. I, I, how did this even get on your radar to start with? Uh, it got on, it got on my radar with, after a visit with Miss Patterson. And uh, she, she told me some things and then it was after she had received a phone call from Bob Gimlin. And I was there. So I, I, I heard the phone conversation. Can you tell uh, us about all that and how it went down? Well, I, it's, it's getting into private stuff. I but, understand. Uh, it, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't a pleasant conversation. Right. And it, it made her very angry. And and she she turned around and and began to just let some stuff go. Uh, I didn't ask for it. I, I right. wasn't there for that p purpose. Uh, I was just there to visit. Uh, and so when, when she told me what she told me, I didn't do or say anything. I didn't press her. I, I said, I'm, I'm a, I need to check it against the film, which right. is the film is the kind of the, the guide for all of that type of stuff. Uh, if it's if you can't find it anywhere in the film, then it's moot. Okay, but as it turned out, on frame by frame, you could find some things that would fit the description, and so uh, it, it it remained on the table. Uh, and and it's not it's not that I have anything against anybody. I don't. I, I, uh, I've, I've known Bob Gimlin for quite a number of years, long before this. And uh, and to be honest with you, uh, I, I think 
uh, he's a, I mean, he's a good person that probably was in an impossible situation, you know, uh, a, 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 but it's not me. To, I'm not his judge. Uh, right. And my, my, my main goal period was the preservation of the film and to make sure that it, it was not, uh, it was not, I say that somebody could take it mm-hmm. and, 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 rip it to pieces and and there's several ways to go at it i had clarified the film a great deal it was harder to do it that way so people began to attack the the people behind the film right and and so he didn't pay his bills he didn't do this he rented a camera didn't pay for it uh and then uh, the timeline the timeline was it, it makes a person suspicious because and people who know film know that that there was a two week minimum turnaround on that. And they were claiming to have taken it on a Friday and showed it on a Sunday, mm-hmm. you know, and that just, it was not possible to do that. It was very, very, this was a unique film that only two places in the United States developed it. It, it was developed with a process that they kept secret and made people sign non-disclosures, uh, the employees that developed that film. It was so stable and so clear and, and, and that it, there was only film that was better was Technicolor. You know, and getting into that too, uh, MK, I don't want to bring up about the personal, the personal conversation, phone conversation. But does that lead to speculation then that perhaps during this conversation that like a lot of people, it's out there, it's, it's speculative, it's stories we've all heard that somewhere at the end of the film, perhaps Patty and her family were in fact killed. But the thing that people ask, and, and again, you can answer this however you like, are they making claims that perhaps there was more than just Bob and, and Patterson were involved, that maybe there were people in the distance that they were inadvertently led to Patty and these people perpetrated a dirty deed. Uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, uh, Bob and, uh, and and Roger. Okay. They they happened upon it. You know that they they were called by uh, Al Hudson. Mm. Uh, he was like the go to guy at Willow Creek, and and, and you know, Roger was sick with cancer. He was out of the loop for a while. He made a trip up to, to Mount St. Helens. Uh, he told he told Al if, if there hadn't been any tracks in Bluff Creek since 1964, uh, when they had a 500 year flood. And so he says, if any tracks show back up, I'd like to come and film them. And so. The first of all, there was a party that involved John Green that went up there there was tracks that showed up. That's who went up there first. Okay. John left. And, and, uh, Al, I got Al on videotape. He'll tell him his own story. He said, as soon as they left, he called Roger. He told Roger, Roger, uh, John's gone. Uh, these tracks are still here. You want to come, come. He says, I'll be, I'm on my way. And uh, so he, he comes immediately. What he did not know was that John Green had gotten a phone call from out of the bed of Bluff Creek with the truck phone, which they, they patch it to a operator. You know what I mean? Right out of the truck in those days. Uh, and he said, what you're looking for is here. And he immediately chartered a plane and came back. So it took it took Roger a day to get down there and took him a day to get down there. And they got down there about the same time. Uh, and it, it was a whole bunch of stuff going on at that time. It was a it was a hunt, but it wasn't Roger's hunt and it wasn't Bob's hunt. OK, they, they, they just it was just one of those things. They all knew each other. 
uh, Bigfooters all knew each other back in those days. There weren't that many of them. Right. Um, but it, it's that's that's the story. You know, that's what people have told me. Yes. Uh, now, as far as I know, some things happen because I got it on. I got it on a separate film. Now, those guys claimed, well, when I left, it was a month before Roger came. But that's not what Al says. Al says that he immediately called Roger. Roger said, I'm coming on. See, that's not, they both, one day, it takes one day to drive down, you know, from Yakima. And uh, so, same amount of time to get that plane to come back. So you know they were they were all down there at the same time, and uh, it, the 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 story the story evolves. Uh, people step forward, tell you more. Uh, a bear hunter told me that uh, he knew well, he knew an awful lot, way more than he should have ever known. Uh, that's when you kind of realize that that he he may have been involved in it actually. Uh, and he told me about the the, the the logging companies having, you know, this practice of handling in-house bears uh, whenever they didn't, they didn't worry about the game warden or the seasons or anything like that. When they had a problem bear, they brought in a professional person like this bear hunter. He, he got paid very well by the logging companies to eliminate bears. Uh, and, and when the problem came up with the Bigfoot, uh, they, the Bigfoot was resisting the uh, in, incursion into the, these pristine woods uh, by, by, how you say, uh, just vandalizing their stuff at night. And they got fed up with it, and they got some people, professional people, and, and to, we want them gone. And that's what you see that film of the tracking dog. That's that's them, <laughs> and that's who Roger walked up on. And uh, you see one of them looking down there. He'd been there the previous day, and he sees this big pile of horse crap. And he's looking at it, you know, like what? Is, you know, who's here? <laughs> uh, and so uh, Roger had he three horses. Him, I mean, between him and Bob and a pack horse. Uh, so, so that's that's where the story. That's where, that's the story in a nutshell. It's it's more details, but certainly uh, it's it's not my story. Uh, I, I it, this was told told it to me, but not not by me. Yeah, in uh, I, I I I have very little very little concern. Other than the film, right? My my, my I, I will I will investigate whatever I have to, to to do right by the film, and uh, so that that's what if that if that was instrumental in explaining what you see on the film, then it becomes important enough to try to get a verification of it. Uh, go ahead. No. I can understand completely, MK, and I know you do a great job with the film, decades of breaking it down, and you've heard these stories, have certain recordings, and, and just it's hearsay, speculative stories from people. But you're an intelligent guy, and you've been around, and, and you've got a gut feeling. Do you think some of this is just all absurd, or do you think that any of this possibly could have happened? I mean, if you're just listening, or is it just speculative, or maybe there's some truth to a lot of these claims. Well, uh, a friend of mine, he met a guy from the Axe Men uh, TV show. You know where the log they follow the loggers into the woods. Yeah, and they and he asked him. He asked him. He, he's told him about the story, and he says, "Do you think it's possible that any of these logging companies would perpetrate such a thing?" Okay. And the guy says, they've done a lot worse. So I, I take it, you know, that he, he has the experience with them to know 
to respond that way. Um, that's big, big business. It's big corporations. That that's Indian land up in there. They consider sacred. Yes. And they they formed human chains to try to keep those people out. They built that go road. You can't even you can't even ride on that go road. Probably not even now. Uh, they built it just to get logs out, and they used it excuse of making an overland, you know, shortcut to the coast. Uh, but they tried to build it down in the creek, and it flood washed it out. So they moved all the construction up to the ridges, and uh, and they built that that. I've tried to travel it in June. You had to shovel snow. <laughs> yeah. it, goes, it goes through the high country, and it's it's not it's not an uh, easy thing. And if you go down it, you better get to where you're going pretty fast because rock slides and stuff t- trap you up in there, you know. And there's there's hardly anybody in there, you know. It's 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 really remote, and that that's the the big the hangout uh, bigfoot you know you, you know i want to ask you too i know it is pretty remote and i want to ask you i have two questions part uh, two questions here one is when's the last time you were back at at uh in bluff bluff springs and but the other thing too i heard and i just this is part of the story that if you go back in a certain area where this allegedly occurred that there's a smell a very pungent chemical smell where people were trying to maybe get rid of evidence. Now that's hearsay that I've heard. Have you heard anything about that? And today you can't even really get back here, back there from what I understand. It's really, really grown over, or at least you got to be in good shape to get back there. I was there last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I, I didn't go all the way down the Creek. Right. Uh, one of the reasons why I didn't go all the way down the Creek is cause I'm not down there trying, really trying to, in some some way. Uh, uh, I, I'm investigating Bigfoot when I'm down there. Oh, I understand. You know, I, I, if I, if I have a place to go to do that, I'm not trying to find spent rifle cartridges or anything like that. That's that's not that's not what I'm absor- absorbed at trying to do. Absolutely, I, I, I'm trying to find new stuff, new Bigfoot evidence and uh so uh i went down there in 2020 we found a whole bunch of tracks uh, they were on the ridge they weren't down in the creek and, and there was a trail leading off down the side of the mountain that was as fresh as you ever seen and uh, it, it really kind of shook me up a little bit because they there was enough of those tracks there was a, quite a number of them uh we we had nobody had been in there in quite a while they had just they had just uh, opened the gates uh this was i think in june yeah yeah it was a uh, well into june mm-hmm. um it it these were so heavy i mean they were they were this deep into real firm ground uh, I, they were they were just huge, and uh, if it was a if that was a bear that did that, it would it would have to be a, a polar bear times two. You know, it was it was Bigfoot. That's what it was. But but it we spent the night there. I was going to sleep in a tent, but I decided to sleep in the vehicle, mm-hmm. and. Uh, we stayed there for a whole day. We made our way down to Laos Camp. Laos Camp is an old logging camp they've made into a little station thing. You can camp there. Or it's got a, a porta potty, a picnic table or two. A very few people get ever make it that far. Uh, it, 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 we had to come in a, another way, a back way. Um, it's it's so remote. I mean, you, you're you're in peril when you go in there. Uh, if 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 you if you don't yeah get attacked by a bear or something, you might get 
you know, stuck in there with a rock slide. Uh, we went that went the, the the road is like tilts toward the the abyss, and it's you barely fit on the road. <laughs> so, and you come by and you move all the rocks. It took us hours, and then when you come back, we came back by. There was there was uh, new rocks that we had to move. So you're 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 right there on the verge of possibly being trapped. Uh, we get, we came by that place coming out, and we came upon this uh, this I don't know what to call this thing. Uh, the, it, it I soon I thought it was a bear at first. It it was a brilliant red, and just looked like somebody had stuck him down in a bucket of black paint. All four, all four legs were black and it was black up on the belly up to the sides. And it had flowing hair coming off the back of its head, blowing in the wind. And it ran across the road from left to right, went in the woods. On all fours or? On all, all fours, all fours. But it was a strange looking. It had kind of a snub nose. Uh, I got, you know, it was good daylight. I got a good look at it, but I wasn't able to get my, you know, I had cut my camera off because I got my arm got worn out holding it, you know. So I set it down right there. I couldn't get it started in time. So I have nothing but a memory of that. Uh, Later on, we found we found this memorial. We found two of these memorials. And it was stone stacked, and then on top of the stones, there were sugar pine cones that uh, this long. You know, they're way they're huge, and they were stacked on top of that. And uh, I, I happened to know because the Indians told me down there in, in uh, Hoopa Reservation that three people had gone missing. Uh, it's probably been 10 years prior and that's why they wouldn't go back up into place uh, you know they they quit going in there but there was these we found two memorials and when I say memorials they had a screwdriver way up high driven all the way to the handle and then above that was this kind of a cross that was put in there with some kind of wire it's just the wire just bound it to the tree and then there was a plastic Jesus above that and this was just out in the middle of nowhere uh, and we had found a similar thing on 12 in 13 the road 12 in 13 and there was a on both of them, they had a stick leaning up against the tree from the bottom, purposely placed there, you know, like this. And and when I found that same same setup there and the other one, you know, it, it to me it linked the two in my mind um, that these were some kind of a memorial, of some of a death or yeah. something. Uh, but, but it remains unexplained and, and, and you know, high strange, highly strange, uh, which I did. I got video of both of them, but you know, I, I don't really put that stuff out too much because I don't have an explanation. Uh, and I'm not looking to argue with anyone. Right. I, I just want, if somebody knows what that means, I'd appreciate it. Um, but, you know that that's it's that kind of a place. Bluff Creek is that kind of a place. Uh, we went back in there in 2009, and we jumped the gate. It was locked, and hiked back in there. It was eight miles, and we came across a rock slide. Nobody had been in there during the time that it was shut, locked up. It, it come down, took the whole road out. We climbed over that, made it to the other side. And here comes this white pickup truck. He's coming from the other way. 
and it's a it's an off duty ranger. And he says, uh, "Look, guys," he says, "I'm not supposed to give y'all a ride, but I'm gonna give you a ride." He says, "Because if I leave you down here, you could die down here." And I wondered why he said it or put it like that. But later on, I found out that this was during that time period when these three people had disappeared, uh, which uh, I don't know who they were, but they were, I assume they were Native Americans. Uh, and that, that it became a big deal amongst them. I mean, it, pr people wouldn't go back in there. But they must have gone in there and set up these little memorial things. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of, unless Bigfoot did it. I know that where we found all the tracks were a huge pile of these sugar pine cones. And there was no sugar pine tree. Uh, they had been brought in there on that little trail. They had been brought up there and stacked. Uh, and these huge tracks were all around them. You know, these deep, deep tracks. Uh, makes I don't me kind of wonder. Makes me kind of wonder if it was a little bit of both. You know, um, maybe the some you know humans hung the cross and the Jesus, and then the you know maybe the pine cones and stuff like that were the Bigfoot. Well, the only thing about it, if they hung it, they had to have a ladder because it was way up there. The, the even even the uh, the first thing the dr the screwdriver was farther than you can reach on your tiptoes. Uh, it it they either had a ladder and did it or 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 something really tall did it. I I know this that they they steal stuff from campgrounds and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, if you found Bigfoot's lair, it, it's it's going to be full of junk. It's interesting that it, it's it. Let's, for argument's sake, let's say the Bigfoot did it. What really sets out to me is they would, if they were memorial, which they sound like they are, and if the Bigfoot did it, that they have some inkling that most of the white people um, consider a cross and, and the figure Jesus as, you know, religious or spiritual. That says well, a lot. You, yeah. Well, you gotta, you gotta kind of consider that anyway. Uh, I don't, I don't know what their real motives were for doing it, but, right. uh, you know, they must have known something about it. Uh, if they were, if they, I don't know where those people, what happened to them or anything like that, but these things were widely spaced out, miles apart. Uh, one, one of them was on 12N13 going into Bluff Creek, and the other one was, I don't know the name of it, it was it was way up on the ridges after coming out of, out of Laos Camp uh, for several miles. Uh, as soon as I saw that stick leaning like this against that tree, you know, Bingo. I mean, I knew the two were connected. Right. Uh, the, the first one didn't have all the stuff up high like that. It was, it was, it was just a, the rocks that were, were kind of assembled at the base of the tree and then the pine cones on top of the rocks, uh, which, you know, I couldn't even begin to tell you what that means, but I felt like in my, in my own thinking that I was looking at a memorial. Right. And, and though I knew that those three people had disappeared. So, you know, you just kind of try to, in any, at least in a loose fashion, try to put them together, you know, try to get an uh, explain it. But I'm yeah. open. I'm open for any explanation, really. You know, so, too. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Rob. I, I was going to say we're coming up close go, to our break. Yeah. For, I was going to say the same 49 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's a. Uh, what I'd like to get into after the break is, is the whole go through the timeline from start to stop on, you know, what, what happened. 
you know, and. Oh, you're talking about you, the Bluff Creek incident. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, really drill down on it as far as we can, as far as you're comfortable with drilling yeah. down on it. Well, I, 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 as far as I've able to put it together, I, I don't mind doing that. Uh, but I would like to emphasize that this is not hard evidence. Right. Uh, right. And that's one thing I want to get out there too, you know. Uh, Absolutely. So when it comes when it comes down to it, I, I I think that Bob Gamlin is the last survivor of uh, that did something very special. And uh, I don't know if we'll ever get anything that good again. Uh, so you know he he I don't I don't think badly of him at all. Uh, and I hope he doesn't think badly of me uh, for trying to give due diligence to those stories. Right. Uh, so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And with that being said, I appreciate that, MK. And one other thing I want to ask, too, we don't have time, but maybe we're going to get into a text has suggested. As far as the missing 401, you talk about the three missing people. I'm just wondering how many in the Bluff Creek area have gone missing if there's any record on that that's something i'd like to dig up but uh if you got a quick uh you got 30 seconds if you have an opinion yeah, on that. That would, it would be worthwhile to, to look into that uh that was something i was unaware of uh, until that lady told me and she says oh it's such a beautiful place i'd love to go but she said i i'm scared to death to go in there and then she told us the story of the three missing people in there. And everybody down there take that very seriously. I, I don't know what they think, but it's, it's very serious to them. Thank you for that, MK. And we do have to cut away. We're going to take a five-minute break. We're going to come back with MK Davis. Fascinating. We're going to get into the fascinating Bluff Creek incident coming up shortly. Five-minute break. Thank you for everybody. Everybody listening on iHeartRadio and Odyssey Radio, you got to come over now because that show will be cut. Subscribe to Texas Front Porch or Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Hell, subscribe to both. Come check us out. You don't want to miss the second half. Text if you can find the five minute break button. We'll go do it. Smoke them if you got them. If you got them, that's right. Four minutes to go, folks. Four minutes. Three minutes, we're almost there.
Two minute warning, guys. Two minute warning. One minute, one minute. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show with MK Davis. Tex has to reboot his computer. You know, things happen when you're live streaming. And I know Tex wanted to go into the story from beginning to end. So we'll wait for Tex. I'm sure he wants to listen in on that. So, MK, what we'll, what we'll start with is, you know, we're talking about the missing 411, and let's particularly focus on the um, Bluff Creek area. And maybe any other areas that you're experienced in and doing your research. How much do you think is attributed to legend, folklore, or and and in your opinion, what what is causing this? I certainly am not going to blame it on Bigfoot or. But what type of cryptids or what do you think is going on with that? I'm not really sure. That that place is uh, full of very high strangeness. Uh, I've had I've had cameras go out that were brand new, that the, the the screen would just turn to snow, and I, when I got away from there, I still got the camera to this day. It's never malfunctioned again. Uh, came back, uh, you know. Uh, I've had cameras that would refuse to uh, autofocus. You know, they just sit there and hunt wouldn't focus on anything uh you know it's, it's it's just been a place that's strange uh it's got some energies in there the ground one time we we were going up the hill it's 45 degree mountainside and the the ground was warm it was about 100 degrees uh mm -hmm. you know use that kind of thing you know yeah. there, there there's some energies in there uh, maybe some magnetic fields, electrical fields, things like that. Uh, it's about 70 miles to Mount Shasta. And if you've ever looked into Mount Shasta, Mount Shasta is full of strangeness. Uh, people disappearing, as a matter of fact. Uh, and and uh, the uh, guy claimed to have gone into a, a cave at Mount Shasta and emerged at Bluff Creek. <laughs> now that's quite a system if that were to be true. Uh, maybe so, a, a portal, perhaps. Maybe a portal. I, I, I don't I don't I don't discount anything because I don't understand it. Uh, if 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 it's if it's if it happened, it happened, and it's up to me to try to explain it. But uh, I don't I don't discount it or blow it off, you know. Uh, can't see it. we're looking at something that's pretty strange the the native americans their official story about that that area 
is they believe, that's why it's sacred, they believe that at one time there was another type of human living there. And they went back to the stars through a hole in the sky from off of the two peaks, uh, Medicine Peak and uh, uh, it was Medicine Peak and Chimney Peak. Uh, so they, they, they went back to the stars through a hole in the sky, another type of human. Wow. So that, that's their official belief. It's in, it's on, it's printed out. <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah. That's, that's strange. That is very strange, man. That's, and again, another rabbit hole, you know, you don't, you get into this, these subjects and, it takes you to other places. I've certainly found that out. Tex has certainly found that out. And Tex, finally, he's back. He has his computer up and roaring. Tex, I didn't start the story because I waited for you since you posed the question because I know you want to kick back and enjoy this. So, Tex, I got to go pay my lawn guy. If you want to start off with that question, I'll be back in uh, three shakes of a lamb's tail. We'll be counting them. So, where I want to start is um, where where do you where the version of the time and I, I'm going to say this, but the version of the timeline that you're given that you've been given and, put, and been able to put together with the interviews and the stories and and everything over the years and. You know what, what? What happened? When did it happen? And if it's possible, why? You know, uh, evidently, uh, assuming assuming if this is correct, uh, they there was already an event occurring down there in the turn in the way of hunting a Bigfoot with a with a gun uh, and a dog. And that Patterson was inadvertently called and he came down there and stumbled upon it and and, uh, and maybe in some possible way became part of it. Uh, like I said, they all knew each other. Uh, it, it's a, I, I've got a I've got a separate film that shows the, the other event, you know, uh, and. <laughs> and that, that far as that time, it's, it's it's easily understandable to me because I I come from an area, and you probably do too, where people hunted that way, a very effective way of hunting. You get a, a a really good dog and and some horses, and you can almost get it, catch up to anything. Uh, it when I saw that. I realized my mind went back to Miss Patterson's what she had told me, and uh, it it <laughs> it it, it kind of came to me how how it occurred and how Patterson got got involved. Because let me tell you, Roger Patterson was not for shooting a Bigfoot at all. Uh, he was he was adamant about it. Uh, Bob Gimlin, he was neither way. He, he didn't even believe in them. You know, that was only the second time he'd ever been out with Roger. And and they went out as a favor. You know, to Roger needed his truck, and and uh, he, he wasn't working at the time. He went out there. You know, I, I, I bet he has lots of mixed feelings about it, considering how it turned out to be uh, on the cusp of a great discovery. And then you got this film, and... You cannot show it in its entirety, uh, but they. But I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, I, I, uh, you got a, you got a, over your shoulder. You got a, a company that doesn't want it shown. You know, uh, it's it's all just all kinds of, of factors enter into it. Uh, so. 
you know, they, they make this harmless version, you know, that, that, that pretty much is sterile. Uh, it shows the creature, but only, only just enough, you know, it's been cut here, cut here, cut here. Uh, and, and they argued about that when he first took the film. Uh, people were saying, hey, how come she's over here going into the woods and then now she's going up there? And uh, they they swore they never, never stopped filming. You know, it was all one film. The, even the leader has had, they've had different leaders on the front of the film. You know, right now they have them riding around looking at the scenery, you know, filming the for the fall colors, but they didn't used to have, they used to have another one. And they had, uh, one time they had the reenactment of them rearing up on the horses and stuff. They had that for a leader. Uh, the, the creature itself is what I'm interested in. The right. part that, that has the creature on it. And it's so good. It's so good that you, it, you cannot, you cannot tear it apart. Uh, not the best versions of it. It will defeat you. And uh, it doesn't need Roger Patterson, and it doesn't even need me. It doesn't need anyone to vouch for it. You can look at it with your own eyes and believe your own eyes. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, and so... <laughs> That that's that's my main concern the whole time is that the film does not experience you know uh, people have tried believe me uh, uh, being uh, torn torn and torn down you know to where it was unbelievable. Bob Hieronymus is one of if you took everybody who claimed to be the man in the suit you'd have a crowd in that thing you'd have four, five or six people you know uh, it, it's it's crazy. The people that have entered entered into that try to interject themselves into it, um, but when you see the best versions, all of that becomes by the wayside. You know, uh, I wanted to address the the chemical smell. Thanks. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. Uh, now they had lime down there. They when they were trying to get those logs out and stuff, they would mix lime with the sand. It's quick lime and it would harden it and uh probably responsible for why no uh no salmon come up in there now you know because it kills not just the fish but it kills that smell that they were they need you know to to return um there's no salmon in bluff creek but it it's it's plenty big big enough for salmon um but I found the actual lime pile, and I found it by, uh, we found nothing was growing there. Everything was growing everywhere. There was just a pile, a place there was nothing growing. And it's, a, it's an acidic forest. Everything is acid, and the soil is acid. And I got samples, and I checked the, the pH, and they were slightly alkaline. And the carbon, uh, what do you call it? The uh, carbonates, which is what's left over once lime is spent and it's already reacted, you get carbonates left over. Uh, it, it was high, high in carbonates. So I found the exact spot where the lime pile was. And the, you can see the lime pile uh, in, a, in a photograph that was taken four years after the filming you can still see the white area you know four years later uh it, it uh it was just uh so when she walks by and you see that white under the bottom of the foot it's lime there's hmm. also there's also a white handprint on that log uh, where somebody has gotten the lime on their hands and put it against the log, you know, jumping over the log or whatever. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, yeah, that, that, that all, see, it it's, enters into the picture. You, you need an explanation for the film. Right. There's the, the, their timeline is inadequate. 
It, it doesn't explain it. But but there are some explanations. And you people have always wondered or, or even argued or fought over whether I mean, the, the white bottom, they say that's a suit. It's got, you know, people, they don't have white under the bottom of their foot. Well, you know, that's the explanation. It's lime. So where where does where does the the uh, timelines what, what's not meshing about the timelines? Well, it's the it's the story that they give, saying that they were they 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 took the film early e- afternoon, and they came all the way out of there, and then drove fifty miles to the coast, went to the Eureka Airport, and sent it off on a plane. This is on a Friday. And then they watched it in uh, Yakima on a Sunday. And there's no place to, no place that would develop that type of film. That film, the way you develop it, and it, it, it's hard to believe it even works. Uh, they, they would take the film off of the reel spaghetti style it would just be a mass and they would dunk it in a, a bleach no at first they would do it dunk it in uh the i think it was red and the red would go to the bottom layer and be absorbed and they're sitting there watching a clock and it got so many seconds they pull it out of there and then they uh they wash it and then they bleach it but it's it's all it's all the way through all three layers red green and blue and they bleach it in bleach until it it cuts the colors out of the top two layers and then they take it out real quick and wash it (laughs) that that leaves the bottom layer with red okay then they put it in another color I'm not sure which one, green or blue. And they they know exactly how much time it takes to go through the top layer into the second layer. And when it when it reaches that time, they pull it out and they wash it. And then they bleach out the top layer. And it's it's very short. It don't take long. And then they go back and sit in the final color, they put it in it, and then they pull it out real quick. And then they don't bleach. They just wash it. And believe it or not, uh, that produce, produces one of the most stable films ever invented. But there's only a few people that did it. There are only two places in the United States. And uh, they actually were thinking about trying to invent a machine, a Kodak was, that would do it where they could put them in these... In these uh, stores and stuff but then it never came to to pass because it was so complicated and they ended up dropping that line and just dropping it all together and going with a less quality uh film because you could you could do it and develop it easier uh but that was the film they had uh coat coat uh, coat of color too it, uh, I found that out. It was highly coveted. It was hard to find out. Huh. They, they didn't want it known, and they'd gone through great steps to keep it from being known. And I, I, I went through a, a guy that had gone to work for Kodak and had gone through, to, through their school and everything. And then he opened up his own camera shop. And he told me, how, how it was done and you know i, I was wow <laughs> it, no wonder no wonder they couldn't turn it around yeah uh, yeah because you said it was what a two-week process of yeah, two, two, week, two weeks minimum so you certainly couldn't do it on a weekend right so uh, do you, you know, think the film was taken two weeks prior to what they're saying when they saw it or they fudged no. the date when they saw it. Uh, it, it. If you if you measure the shadows, 
and I, I have some some uh, examples that I took and I put them beside the film. And, and I was standing there in June and I threw about the same shadow. Uh, so it was it was taken sometime in the summer. Because uh, uh, the shad the shadows don't change; they're astronomical. I mean, they they come from the seasons, the, the earth tilt of the earth. Uh, so it, it it was they had plenty of time, plenty of time to do editing or anything they wanted to do with it. So. I've, I've I've seen I've, I've got some statements and some questions and stuff in in uh, chat that um, Duke says there um, one how how do they train the dog to track a Bigfoot when almost every report well he says every report we seems to indicate dogs are terrified of them and won't track them and I've heard that they they either won't track or or they get they just run around in circles. You can, if you have a Bigfoot smell, you can train the dog to track a Bigfoot. They'll track a polar bear. You know, they'll track the worst things that got here on this earth. If you yeah. have the smell to train them, if, it, if you just run them up on a foreign scent that they don't know, then they won't. But if you, if you train them, they will. And I don't know, I wasn't there when they trained him, but the dog was not a hunting dog. He was an attack dog. And oh, he, okay. came, he came from North American Guard Dog Services in Canada. And he, the guy said that he was the baddest dog in all of Canada. Hmm. And, and he looks pretty friendly looking at him on the film. Right. But the guy said that. Uh, and I know that they 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 use medication on him to fly him on a plane. Mm. Uh, uh, he was uh, Alsatian, which is a large version of the of the German Shepherd breed. You know, he's just a little bigger. Uh, yeah. Actually, it wasn't a he; it was a she. Uh, mm. Al Hudson's son sat next to the dog and put his arm around the dog and the guy says, get away from him. You know, he's doped up right then, but he said, get away from him because he's a killer or she's a killer. Right. And her name was white lady. She was solid white. So Danny Staten um, says he heard there's more footage that's never, that's never been released. that shows a juvenile but he hadn't seen it. I haven't seen it. I, I've heard, heard it? I've heard it. I've heard that very same thing. And I've had a lady tell me she saw it. And, and I, like I said, this is, that's not hard evidence. It's only somebody's word. Right. And, uh, when it comes right down to it, uh, you know, there, you, that, that will not suffice to say this happened. So uh, you reach a, a kind of a crossroads what, what you want to do. You know, uh, I've got a lot of recorded conversations. You know, I, I haven't published them or anything where right. people told me what they saw. But, you know, uh, when it comes, it's, it's not, it won't suffice, you know. So I, I'm satisfied that the film itself will stand on its own merits. You know, I think it's, it's where it needs to be. And I think that, that when it comes to the story, the actual story that explains the film, only person left that could tell that story correctly is Bob Kim. And if Bob doesn't want to do it, He's not going to, I'm not going to try to get him to do it. You know, it, it's not me. It's not my story. Right. 
I don't even consider it. I, I'm interested only because it explains the film, you know. Uh, other than that, it's his story is just like the lady's story or the the guy that the bear hunter story. They're they're stories. They're not a uh, they're not hard evidence. Right. So Duke says that Richard Doty says Doctor Bruce Maccabee is a gentleman who has the full reel with the seven additional seconds of the video, and he's currently trying to sell it. Have you heard that? Uh, he, I have. He may have it. I don't know. I, I, I assume that he does. Bruce Maccabee is a nice nice man and a truthful man as far as I know. Uh, when I met him, when I spent some time with him, he seemed to be good as gold. You know, uh, he, he examined the copy that I had. He did. He expressed his opinions about the red hole, which is the most what I was most concerned about. I wanted him to look at it because he's an expert in optical physics. Now, and I'm sorry, concerned about the what? There's a there's a, a puddle of red material liquid. Uh, it, it's a uh, it's beneath a, a root ball. Uh, you know where it collected. And uh, I wanted to make sure that that it was indeed red material and not some kind of a, a, a film reaction or film, you know, anomaly. And uh, he agreed. Uh, so that that's the only thing that I considered to be verified uh, that that red hole was there. Uh, it. it People have tried to claim that it was maple leaves and all kinds of stuff. But it's, it's a liquid material. I got good pictures of it. I got it from Miss Patterson. Uh, it, it, but nevertheless, uh, I showed it to Bob that evening. I'm, a, I'm just a, I'm, I'm a kind of a Mr. Magoo of researching. You know, I, I just bumbled my way around. I said, hey, Bob, what is this? You know, at the time, I, I didn't know. Uh, he looked at it, and he said, where the hell did you get that? <laughs> just like that. I didn't even, I didn't ask him no more. I just, okay, good enough. <laughs> so when, when's the when's the last time you talked to Bob? Uh, it's, it's been a long time since me and Bob talked cause, because of that, he he hasn't been on a friendly basis with me anymore. Uh, I hate that. I hate that because I, I, I didn't set out to do that. I set out to, to give due diligence to the film, right. try to try my best to get not just a better film, but an explanation of how they got it. Uh, and so I, th I think his, his was an overreaction. You know, it, had it been me, I would have just said, I would have laughed, laughed it off if it wasn't true. You know, yeah. uh, it, it kind of looks bad when somebody, you know, reacts like that. But I, I Real can't. quick, I want to give a shout out to Elaine um, for the for the donation. We, we and the support, man, we, we, we appreciate that. Um it, it helps us with the equipment and stuff like that. And uh, it, it's, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, you're welcome for the interesting info. It's, it's, <laughs> it's fascinating. Now, MK, why don't we go, because there's a lot of people, we got a lot of new people in here um, today, and we knew it was going to be a big show. But there's a lot of people that don't know maybe everything that we're talking about. You know, we keep mentioning the story and and the events that led up to the film and everything that like that. Could, could you take us through what I want to say supposedly happened um, versus what we're told? Uh, you're talking about uh, what happened. You know, 
Yeah, to the Bigfoot and everything like that. And oh, yeah, the the eventuality. Yeah, I can, who tell was, you, I, I can only tell you what I've been told. Right, right, and it, yeah. it's you know, and that's that's what we're you know, I, I'm not. You don't want to put this out as hard evidence because it's not. It's it's stories you, and accounts you've been told, and that's one thing I wanted to clear up because a lot of people have the 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 wrong idea. They, they think you're sitting on a smoking gun and you're not, you know, you, you just know what you've, you've pieced together a timeline of what the events that you've been told that actually happened up. Right. Right. Uh, it, it, from, from Miss Patterson on down to the old, uh, the old, uh, uh, bear hunter, which right. he claimed that he claimed to have the gun that did it. And uh, wow. I, I went and looked at that gun and took it apart. I looked all over it. Uh, it's what got caliber eye, was it? It's a thirty out six. Yeah, three oh eight. Both of both action. Uh, it's it's got a uh, Ivan Marks's name on it. Uh, a famous Bigfooter. Used to be in the entertainment industry. I don't know how much you know about Ivan Marks. I've, uh, I've I've heard the name and you know here and there and everything, but I don't know a whole lot about it. He he said that Ivan Marks gave it to him after he bought some of his dogs. He sold Ivan Marks two of his dogs, and Ivan Marks gave it to him and told him that it had been used to kill uh, five Bigfoot. I think he said. Uh, down there at Bluff Creek. Uh, so, you know, it's just a story. That was right, a, right. a gun, like, you know, a manufactured gun. Uh, it had Ivan Marks' name on it. I believe it was true uh, because the case had his name as well. Um, I believe that it was Ivan Marks'. Uh, so, you know, it... The, the story that is, is still somebody's word, you know, word, it, it, it's a story. I, I wanted something positive that I could either say yay or nay. Uh, right. and, and it's kind of it's, it's hard to sit in limbo with a possibility of something like that. But uh, never, nevertheless, uh, the, that that's... Uh, you, I, I, uh, we could probably go on for a long time if you want to get into the, the nuances, you know, the different people and what all they've told me. Uh, well, I, that, I would, I would love that, to because that guy gave, gave uh, he gave a lot of information and some of it, some of it, I listened to it critically, you know, and I, right. I, I uh, some of it he should not have known unless he was actually there. Right, you right. Know what, you know what I mean. Uh, so he, you know, he, like I said, he knew where they were buried, and uh, I stay, I go around. It. Right. <laughs> I go down there. I, I know what I'm looking at. You know what right. the place where he told me that. I, I didn't bother digging it up. I, so I, I, digging up them kind of bones, uh, you know. Could, Stir up a hornet's nest. So if there how, were how did we? Okay, so they they took they went down there and had this dog, and that's how they found them. That's how they run across the family of Bigfoot. No, they are they were called there because of these Bigfoot had been in there and given them a lot of grief to the employees. Oh, the okay, log, the logging company. Log, that's how. That's what they were doing there. That's why they were having the, the hunt. Um, so they had. They were. The guy was scared to death. Uh, the, the the guy that was handling the dog. Mm -hmm. his, his name was Dale Moffat. And he said that thing's gonna kill, kill my dog, and then I'm gonna be next. You know. So he wasn't ignorant of what he was after. Right. Uh, he, uh, 
matter of fact, he was the one who was supposed to have killed the juvenile, according to the lady. She said the dog, the dog man had taken a pistol and shot it. The, the, the dog had a, a hold of the, the hand of it. And he dispatched it with a pistol. But I don't know that. I don't know that that happened at all. Right. We're, yeah, you know, I just, I, right. And I just want to, I want to go over, you know, what you've been told, you know, and it, it's, it's, uh, you're not saying that this happened. You're saying that this is they, what you were told. That they, they use the, the, the body of the little one to get the others to come out. Really? Wow, yeah. wow. Wow. That when when he got the phone call and said what you're looking for is here or something like that, you know, it, they already had one. And and in that in that video that I have of it and it's I released it to the public and now you can find it on the net. Yeah. But uh, it was sent to me out of Canada. And you can see the remains a hide sitting in a little pool of red water red tinted water and uh, the, the woman said that they brought it up in the back of a jeep and they threw it out there it had come out of the creek and they had threw it out there and let that dog come and smell it and that's what it shows in the film. And you were asking about the smell. You, you have to have that smell. I mean, right. they, it's a foreign smell to them. They won't run it unless you can teach them to run it. Right. He was an attack dog. And, and they had evidently trained him where he could. you could just introduce a smell. Uh, but, but there again, you know. I could show you that, you know, all, that that's all showable. Yeah. You know, I got its own film. Right. Uh, now, you know, some of the other stuff is completely story, a story. Yeah. Or storyline. Uh, some of it, some of it is not, some of it actually has its own film, but yeah, it's, it ain't enough. The, the bar is very high. Uh, right. Right. I, I, I will I will say this right now that you know uh, I am not in any way after Bob Gimlin. Right. Oh, right. for sure. I, I'm not in any way trying to exploit this story. Yeah. Uh, I what I, my main goal was to make sure the film was was preserved in its full integrity. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think what Tex was getting at too, I was busy doing some things behind the scenes here. So sorry, but I was listening. I know, I know where Tex was going. Here's the thing. We know that there are stories out there. MK Tex has heard stories. I've had stories. People are so associate you with the stories. And quite frankly, yeah, this is not MK Davis's factual proof. This is stories you've heard. And <coughs> excuse me. A lot of people have, wondered about these things well some people hey they say rob said this text said this mk said this so i think this platform here today is great for you for a lot of people to say hey mk says this well you today are given what you've heard and i respect that and everybody respects it because there's always cloudiness and there's always things that come to the surface that we know are just speculation and a lot of these this is all conjecture stories that have been passed down throughout decades and of course on this show today uh i am uh you know gimlin patterson that is to me the film of all films and certainly this is not meant to run anybody's good name no. through the through the mud at all and i, oh, I no, was it, it was a, a, a quite an accomplishment that may never be done again yes absolutely nothing but utmost respect for that and those men and Stories are stories, and people like stories, MK. But it also gives you an opportunity to say, hey, here's just what I've heard, and I want to present it. And I think that uh, it's been fantastic so far. Right, Tex? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. People can take it uh, with, a, with a grain of salt. You know, oh, yeah. look at it critically. You know, uh, it's, 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 
it's a possible explanation that that was put together by people who claim to have seen more of the film and, and or people claim to have been there. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I can't verify. And I wasn't in 67. I wasn't thinking about Roger Patterson's film. Yeah. Uh, so, it, it, uh, I have to view it that way, too. Right. Uh, and, and you hope that somebody before they pass away will, will come up with something, yay or nay, or something, you know, uh, that would sat- satisfy that part of it. Uh, but the film itself is is in good shape. It's in great shape. Awesome. It, so it when when they uh, when they took these critters down, did they go into um, whoever you talked to? Did did they go into detail of what it took to take them down? You know, as far as where they had to shoot them, how many times, or anything like well, that. Well, uh, all I know is that the the dog handler shot the little small one with a pistol in the head uh, while the dog had had him. Right. And mm. they used that one to get the other, and that was Patty's, about Patty's third trip. Uh, they shot her over her head the first time, and, and then they decided to dispose of her. Now, that's the word. Right. Not, yeah. not verifiable. What about the whole? It makes sense <coughs> as far as filming her. Right. That if you're camera ready, you can take a pretty decent film. But right. if you get surprised, it's hard. It's very hard. Yeah. It's hard to just grab up a camera in the heat of a moment oh, and yeah. operate that son of a gun. It, I, I had a bear come up on me, and I had a camera right there. And I got yeah. zero video of that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't understand. You know, I mean, it, it's when when you have a an encounter or something like that that it, <coughs> you know is as prepared as you think you're going to be out there in the field. Every time you see one of these critters, man, it, it takes you it takes you by surprise, and you know, and most most encounters are are so fleeting that you know, your reaction time goes all to hell. <laughs> you know? you but, almost can't uh, do it. I mean, it, it, unless you're of extraordinary, uh, you know, calm person inside, uh, it's hard. Uh, but yeah, and, if, if it's the third time around, uh, that's a little different. You know, <laughs> you can be kind of get that camera out and get ready. Uh, yeah. I, it's like a guy waiting on the dogs to bring the deer. You know, yeah. he's coming, you know. Uh, so, you know, so it's not, it's not a lot of people in chat are talking about the uh, the film showing Patty being shot in the leg and um, and possibly a shoulder. Um, can you go over that? Yeah, now that that does show on the on the edited version of the film. Uh, it's it's definitely on the film. It's not an anomaly. Uh, it's got, whenever it bulges, it shows a shadow beneath it that's consistent with the other shadows on the body in the angle and everything. Uh, I got no doubt that that is uh, something bulging on her leg. Uh, it, 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 it don't last but a split second. And then she turns around and walks away. But she does buckle her knee inward in the next frame after that. Uh, so she, there is a reaction to it. So that's when she turns her head and looks back? Uh, this It's after she does that. Oh, okay. So it's, it's after she turns and looks back. She actually looked back at him twice. Uh, the first time is it, when it's all shaky, but right. I was able to find the frame, and she turns like this and look, turns her body sideways. And looks back at him, uh, almost like a person that wants them to follow. You know, you ever seen anybody that you know looking back to see if you're coming? Yeah, I, uh, I've always, you know, when when I when I first heard about she was maybe trying to lead him away from the other ones. You know, birds will do that. 
they'll act like they got a wounded wing and the mama will come off the nest and try to lead you away from the nest. Yeah, kill, and, kill these and do that. Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, and I kind of like it to, to that. You know, if that's I what think she that's a, a good possibility. That, that that may be what is you know there she was up to doing, uh, trying to get them to turn loose or or, or you know, uh, of course that, 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 that uh, it happened over a period of time. This hunt it it wasn't over the same day. Uh, later on, toward November, Richard Henry went there. He and he he drove up there with with. Uh, it's a Jim McLaren. They drove in a Jeep all the way up to the to the tracks. They were just across the creek. They stepped across the creek, and there was the tracks. Mm-hmm. So they drove. <laughs> drove a four four-wheel drive vehicle. You know, uh, so he uh he said that he he found a a makeshift corral that still had hay in it for mm-hmm. horses and this was in november and it, hay was fairly fresh uh so you know it gives you an idea that you know no no you ever hear that before Mm-mm. Mm-mm. you see i had to bother for that little detail <laughs> they, they lasted they stayed down there i tried to get miss patterson to tell me she wouldn't tell me how long they were there but it's probably about a month. Yeah. I can understand that. I mean, being down there that long, trying to get close to something that ain't supposed to exist, but they, they <laughs> looks like they, they were able to do, they did all right. They got, yeah. a, they got a, the film of the century. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, either anyway, you, at that time, you know, nobody had much of anything. Right. And just, it was all stories. That's how Bigfoot existed. Uh, People wrote some books, stories, depositions, but that film rocked rocked the Bigfoot world, rocked the whole world at large. Uh, But they did not release the good, best version of it. They released the shadowy, grainy. And when I saw those filtered images that were so Sterling. Oh my goodness. You know, I said, this is, this is where the answer is. If you can find the rest of the film, you know, that's, that could, this came from, uh, and it's like so many other things that have happened, uh, as the internet began, the internet almost sucks things out of people's possession. Yeah. It ends up being leaked out. Somebody puts it out there and wasn't supposed to. Well, I'll tell you, and this is where I stand on it, MK, and I think you can respect this. Um, If this story is true and it holds water, it's a damn shame that that film came to the cost of so many, you know, innocent lives of these majestic creatures. Yeah. I have to I have to agree with that. I, I I think it's possible this was what they were referring to in their in their their uh, their beliefs. You know that the ones that went back to a hole in the sky. I think that it was in reference to the Bigfoot. I think it's why the whole area was sacred and why they why they 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 formed human chains to keep people out of there. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, it's a it's a lot that we don't know, and they it's a lot that we may never know. And that they they're not they don't talk freely to the rest of the world. Right. Uh, those those are the innermost sacred beliefs. You know, uh, there's probably a lot more. You know. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, MK two. It's like. And for everybody out there listening, you know, we've been gone an hour, 45 minutes. And again, for people joining late, these are stories passed down over decades. Whether they're true or unfounded, we get that. This is not 
facts. This is something that, hey, is worth discussion. We had MK on today to, to discuss that and, and give his thoughts, his opinions, what he's heard. And again, you know, I enjoy this text at MK because I've learned more today about this than uh, than I knew prior. I mean, I just knew the basics about the story and, and now all these claims that come out that, uh, that are, again, speculative. I, I appreciate it, MK. I appreciate you sharing that today, man. Well, there's things that I can, I can release uh, that are hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can release uh, the, the tracking dog. Uh, when he goes up to the hide and you mm-hmm. can see the reds is sitting in red water. Uh, I can, I can release that. That's hard evidence. So uh, I can release, uh, I, I, I photographed very well that gun. Uh, you know, I took it completely apart. All the parts I photographed, uh, as well as the man who, who had it, the old bear hunter. Uh, he's deceased now. So, uh, I could actually release the audio tapes, you know, from recording them. Uh, Do you have any plans on releasing any of that? I don't mind releasing any of it uh, if it helps people to make up their mind, and 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 it just it's just more to work with. It's 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 not going to take you all the way, but it can give you uh, if you're if you're an insightful person, it can give you a little bit. A better something to reason with about yeah. this this film didn't take itself it didn't happen this film of the century just just on a lark i mean it it was it was you know, a, a strange uh combination of unlikely being called down there during that time and when this was going on and you have to worry too sometimes about the logging companies because they're still not real happy about Bigfoot. Yeah. They're they're not. They they the the guy says the same guy with the axe men said that they'll fire you in a second if you just mention the word. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm gonna I want to ask you a question, okay? I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, and. I totally understand if you if you if you can't answer this out of out of respect for Miss um, Patterson, but um, did did she did she tell you that that Bigfoot were killed? She told me they were shot. Okay. Okay. Because to me. I would think that that would be the most credible source. That's just my personal opinion. Well, that as far as if it had been anyone else, I'd have blew blew it off. But yeah. when you got somebody that's an actual principal in the whole thing, then you have you have to consider it. I had to go back and check it against the film. And, well, uh, and I don't know why in the world she would make something like that up. That you know being that her husband was involved and their good friend, you know, Gimlin was involved, that, it just, that, that part doesn't add up. So what, what would she have to gain? You know? Uh, I, I don't know. She, uh, she was mad at Bob. Uh, no. she, I mean, she could have made it up to, to get him back, but I don't think that's the case. Yeah. That's right. Thank you, Elaine E. $20 super chat, Elaine. Wow. Thank you. You're very generous today. Thank you so much. It's just, you know, and I, and I, I've seen these critters, and I, I don't, unless my life was on the line, I don't think I could ever put them in the crosshairs and pull the trigger. You know, but that come, that comes from you know I grew up hunting all my life, and I don't hunt anymore. I just soon hunt with a damn camera as I would a gun anymore. The last, um, the last deer I killed was 1981. Yeah, last one I killed was 95. So, you know, now pigs are a different deal. They're they're just a they're just a a, a scourge of the earth here lately. But um, <laughs> there's a lot of them around here too. Yeah, well, we're overran with them down here, man. And uh, but 
I don't know. I just if 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 everything if if everything that that you've heard is even half true, it's a damn shame. Well, I think that if if they had approached the problem more transparently, yeah, that we we, we wouldn't be sitting here, you know. To, it would be uh it'd be in the books. Well, it, it may be one of them deals to where they were um <laughs> I don't want to say asked, but told and yeah. possibly threatened not to say anything. Yeah, probably. So and I, I, I've always after, thought that. And after years and years and years of it, you know if they better they better they better tell the story like they were told to tell it. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, that's just, uh, <laughs> it, you can get into some big time trouble with big corporations. Yes. Sir. Uh, you know, yes, sir. They, they, they wield a lot of power. Yeah. And people, you know, <laughs> even, even, even now it, it would affect them if, if, oh, if yeah. they found Bigfoot and it was indisputably, uh, they their livelihood and everything uh they they would they would probably rather just take care of it in house yep absolutely like, like the bears yep and you know um the premise be- behind today's show i think it was awesome every story needs to be told whether you believe it or you don't whether it's factual or not but you know People want to know. We want data. We just want to hear these things, and we can all make up our own minds about them. And uh, you well, know, we're coming. Well, the film. The film is a fact. The film. Well, yeah. I'm talking yeah. about the conjecture afterwards. What happened right. after the film is is it's what do you call that? That's um, is gold, right? It is. It's there. I believe it. I think many of our audience believes that that is a factual film. I think you can't deny that, and it's certainly MK. What you've done to help enhance it over the decades has really brought it to the forefront. I wanted to thank you, man, for being on today. And is there any Thanks place we having. is there any place we can find you? I mean, you have a YouTube channel, you got an email, you've got anything you want to disclose to our awesome audience that's gonna listen later on today and it's been watching today. Well, I got a, a YouTube channel, uh Green Wave FB two thousand and ten. It's an old football channel that I converted over to Bigfoot. Uh, and and I got uh, the Davis Report, okay. the davisreport.wordpress.com. And click on the banner up top, and it will take you to the latest. Or, and you can scroll back for a long ways and find all kinds of stuff back in there. Uh, some of the best stuff on the film and, and some of the other films as well. Awesome, MK. And you know what, Tex? We had about 112 people in chat, a record, a lot of new faces. If you have not subscribed to Texas Front Porch, subscribe. Subscribe to Bigfoot Michigan, Rob. And also, you know what, Serial Papers with Jason McLean and the Cryptid Huntress, Jessica Jones. We're on five days a week. We do our best to bring you what you want to hear. Some of you might disagree, but guess what? That's why we do what we do. MK Davis. Thank you so much. Thank you. We certainly appreciate it. Tex, if any final thoughts or you want to hit that button? Well, I just, you know, I want, I want to put it out there. You know, we, we did this show. So, because everybody was getting a lot of different things and saying a lot of stuff about MK and, and about Bob and, and everything. And we did this show so we could hopefully put everything straight, you know, because a lot of people, they, I don't know why, but they, they got the, and you said it yourself earlier, MK, I'm not after Bob. And a lot of people, for some reason, got the feeling that you were, you know, <laughs> and you're not. Oh, I, I love the guy. I, I, yeah. You know, I, unfortunately, you know, y'all parted ways years ago, but, you know, it, it's, and it's on my bucket list to meet the man one of these days, shake his hand. Absolutely. You know, I mean, oh, absolutely. Um, I, I have I have lots of valuables that he, I got. He has signed for me and stuff. I consider them to be treasures. Right. You know, I've yeah. got 
Miss Patterson's signature. And, uh, Hank, maybe one day I can get yours. There you go. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'll trade you. <laughs> if that's how fitting for the end. MK, man, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody in chat. Everyone's going to listen I'll later. Come back to this one these days. Yeah, we'll have him on again. You know, it's a yearly thing. You can't have him on. Once a year is great. We love you, MK. Thank you very much. Everyone follow MK Davis. Does great work. He's also a great photographer. Look up his pictures. He has some fascinating still shots of the moon. I've got a couple stored in my phone already. In fact, one I use as a, a cover picture on my computer. Thanks, MK. All right. Good night. Or good I'll afternoon find, or wherever you are in the button. world. I'll find the button now. I should have been looking for it then. But you know me. Yeah, I know you, Tex. That's why we all love you. <laughs> Y'all have a great. Oh, look at oh, that. Right. Oh, he got that out of my store. Thanks, MK. No, I did. Oh, I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> but I might. Yeah, but cool. I, yeah. I do I have, have me go text. Uh, good. We have an online store on my I YouTube need, page, and so does Tex. I need another All right. One. Yeah, very good. All right. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. Y'all be safe out there. Yeah. And don't take no wooden nickels. And we'll talk to y'all later.